Hello students, in the previous lectures we have seen the degree of kinematic indeterminacy of beams and degree of kinematic indeterminacy of pin jointed structures. In this lecture I am going to discuss the degree of kinematic indeterminacy of rigid jointed structures. Rigid jointed structures are classified into two types, plane that is 2D rigid jointed structures and space that is 3D rigid jointed structures. Now in case of plane rigid jointed structures, each joint can have three independent displacement components. The, uh, those are delta x, delta y and theta. Delta x is the linear displacement component along x axis. Delta y is the linear displacement component along y axis and the, uh, theta is the rotational component about z axis. Now similarly in case of 3D rigid jointed structure there are 6 independent displacement components which can happen at each joint. Delta x, delta y, delta z are the linear displacement components along the reference directions. Theta x, theta y and theta z are the rotational displacement components above the reference axis. Now in case of plane rigid jointed structure dk is given as 3j minus e. So if there are j number of joints in a plane rigid jointed structure, three independent displacement components are possible at each joint. So total number of displacement components is equal to 3j. But there may be some constraints. So those constraints will not allow the displacement to happen. And that is why we will have to consider those constraints and which are given by means of E and DK is given as 3J minus E, E is equal to total number of constraints. Similarly, DK in case of 3D rigid jointed structure is given as 6J minus E. 6 times J is the number of joints minus E is the number of constraints which are provided. Now E is equal to number of constraints or number of compatibility equations and these compatibility equations or constraints is equal to number of constraints due to support conditions plus number of constraints due to some other factors such as inextensibility. So we will have to work out the total number of constraints, constraints due to reactions or support conditions and constraints due to some other factors such as inextensibility. Now how to get these constraints, how to calculate these constraints? I am going to explain it with the help of an example. Now I am considering a double storied building frame. So it is a double storied building frame in which there are six number of rigid joints A, B and C. A, B, C, D, E, F are the rigid joints and these are the supports G, H, I. Out of these three supports G is the roller support, H is the hinge support and I is the fixed support. And if I want to get the degree of kinematic indeterminacy dk what i am going to do is that i am going to count the actual number of displacement components which are possible over there so see how it is to be used or how it is to be calculated now at joint a it is a rigid joint three displacement components are possible the horizontal displacement component the vertical displacement component and the rotation at joint B which is again a rigid joint three displacement components three displacement component at C now as there are six number of rigid joints and three displacement components can happen at each rigid joint the total number of displacement components for these six number of rigid joints is equal to 18 now there are these three supports at support G the vertical reaction is going to take place because it is a roller support and uh, which is resting on a horizontal plane and that is why vertical reaction will be there which is actually the constraint for vertical displacement and only horizontal displacement and rotation can happen so two displacement components at roller support now at hinge support vertical and horizontal component of reaction is there so two constraints only one displacement component that is rotation can happen in case of a fixed support which can provide the vertical component of reaction, the horizontal component of reaction and fixed end movement also. So no displacement component is possible at this support. As such, 
18 number of total displacement components at the rigid joints plus these three which makes 21. So 21 is the total number of displacement components which can happen in this case and that is why degree of kinematic indeterminacy dk is equal to 21. This is how you can get the degree of kinematic indeterminacy just by counting the total number of independent displacement components. You can get the degree of kinematic indeterminacy by using the formula also. In case of a plain rigid jointed frame structure, uh, dk is given as 3j minus e. j is equal to number of joints. So if I measure or if I count the number of joints over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, support is also a joint. So these three, so total number of joints is 9, j is equal to 9. And dk is equal to 3j minus e. So 3 into 9 minus 6, it makes 21. dk is equal to 21. But while getting the degree of kinematic indeterminacy over here, I have assumed that all the members are extensible, means all the members are elastic. Now in structural analysis, in case of rigid jointed structures, it is common practice to assume that all the members are inextensible, means all the members are axially steep. No displacement can happen along the axis of the member. Now uh, what I am doing is that in the first step I am going to assume that the columns are inextensible and in the second step I am going to assume that beams are inextensible. In the first step when I assume that columns are inextensible then the vertical displacement at all these joints that is A, B, C, D, E, F the vertical displacement is not possible at these joints. So as such vertical displacement at these rigid joints is zero. Vertical displacement at these joints is already zero because there cannot be any vertical movement. So we'll have to consider these joints only and vertical displacement at these joints is zero. At, uh, it means that uh, we know the vertical displacement at all these joints and as such we get six compatibility equations in addition because at six positions six joints we know the vertical displacement that uh, it is zero so six additional compatibility equations six more constraints are known to us if we assume that the columns are inextensible and if we count the number of columns again one two three four five six six is the number of columns and the number of compatibility equations due to assumption that the columns are inextensible is also equal to 6. So if we assume that the columns are inextensible, the additional number of compatibility equations, the additional number of constraints we are getting is equal to number of columns. Now if we assume that the beams are inextensible, if the beams are inextensible, the horizontal movement is not possible at these joints. But again, the frame may undergo this way. So there can be a horizontal displacement at A, horizontal displacement at D. So if A undergoes horizontal displacement, B will also undergo the horizontal displacement and C will also undergo the horizontal displacement. So which is because of this way. Now, if the horizontal movement of A, that is horizontal displacement of A is known, same will be the horizontal displacement of B, same will be the horizontal displacement of C. And as such, the horizontal movement of B and C is known. Same is the case uh, uh, if we consider the beam DEF. Horizontal displacement of E and F are known to us if horizontal displacement at D is known. So for these four positions, for these four joints, B, C, E, F, we know the horizontal displacement if we calculate the horizontal displacement of A and D. As such, we get four additional compatibility equations if the beams are assumed to be inextensible. And these number of compatibility equations is equal to number of beams. So total number of compatibility equations over here is equal to four because four beams are there. And here in case of columns, if they are considered as inextensible, the total number of compatibility equations is 6, 
which is again equal to the number of columns. So if all the members of a frame are considered as inextensible, the additional number of compatibility equations is equal to the number of members in that frame. As such, the equations which we used over here for kinematic indeterminacy get modified like this. Now these equations are to be used when the members are considered as inextensible sorry extensible if whereas if we consider the members as inextensible dk is given as 3j minus r plus the additional equations of compatibility which are available and which are always equal to the number of members so dk is equal to 3j minus r plus m in case of a plain rigid jointed structure and dk is equal to 6j minus r plus m in case of a 3d rigid jointed structure so these formulae are to be used when the members are considered as inextensible whereas these are to be used when the members are extensible. Generally we assume that all the members in a rigid jointed structure are inextensible and that is why these formulae are commonly to be used to calculate the degree of kinematic indeterminacy. Thanks.